Welcome back, Rock Raiders. I'm your host, R.R. Slugger, and this is Race for Survival. Here's the story so far. The LEGO Rock Raiders are an intrepid team of scientists, engineers, and miners. They explore deep space in search of valuable minerals and crystals to bring back home. Six months ago, their spaceship, the LMS Explorer, was hit by an asteroid and badly damaged. The Rock Raiders were trapped in the orbit of an uncharted planet. Luckily, Planet U contained rich sources of LEGO ore, as well as power crystals, the purest form of fuel in the galaxy. The Rock Raiders descended beneath the planet's surface. They were able to excavate LEGO ore and power crystals to energize the ship's engines and travel home. Now, the Rock Raiders have traveled back to Planet U, this time on a fact-finding mission. Planet U is a mysterious world on the far side of the galaxy. Its structure is completely unlike our own planet. Volcanic areas sit side by side with limestone caves, icy underground lakes, and marble caves studded with gemstones. Massive creatures called rock monsters live in the underground tunnels and feed on power crystals. Now, read on. Axel switched off the engine of the Lego Chrome Crusher. He wiped his hand over his forehead. Mining is such hot work, the Rock Raider grumbled. It's a shame that there's no chance of a cool breeze two miles underground. Axel pushed a button on the Chrome Crusher. The engine started up again and the steel drill began to cut through the solid rock. Axel peered at the massive walls. He was hoping to spot a vein of Lego ore in the stone. This was a routine mission. Axel was checking levels of Lego ore in Quadrant 14, one of the unexplored regions of Planet U. If he found some ore, he could hurry back to headquarters for a well-earned rest. From time to time, Axel checked the instruments panel on the Chrome Crusher. He needed to keep an eye on the working conditions underground, especially since he was alone today. Scanners were built into the Chrome Crusher to warn him of any potential risks. Methane levels okay? Mmm, check, muttered Axel. He flicked a small switch. It showed that there was no buildup of poisonous, explosive gases in the tunnel. Conditions in the mine seemed stable. Axel had no warning that disaster was about to strike. He was just too hot. Then. Suddenly, the walls of the tunnel seemed to tremble. The drill made a bucking movement and lurched forward. Axel lost his balance. He almost fell beneath the wheels as the Chrome Crusher tilted onto its side. At the same time, he heard a roar and rocks above him. Boulders began to crash from the roof of the tunnel and break into razor-sharp splinters. Ground tremor, Axel thought, trying not to panic. It's time to get out of here. But he was already too late. On the LMS Explorer, Sparks had just taken over the radio controls. It was a quiet shift. Everything seemed to be running smoothly on Planet U. Sparks smiled to himself as he remembered the Rock Raiders' first mission to the planet. After the huge asteroid hit the Explorer, the team had faced a risky mission to the planet's surface. They had come across rock monsters, ice monsters, and burning lakes of lava as they searched for power crystals. Luckily, the search had all been worth it in the end. Now, the Rock Raiders were back. They had come to analyze the rocks on Planet U in detail. As Sparks thought back over the earlier trip, Axel's voice crackled over the radio. Mayday! Mayday! Can anyone hear me? Axel to headquarters! His voice was very faint. What's wrong, Axel? called Sparks, grabbing the radio. I'm in trouble, dude, Axel replied. There's been a tremor in quadrant 14, and now I'm trapped in a tunnel. My oxygen purifier won't work for much longer. I need help soon, guys. Then the radio faded out. The Explorer's rescue vehicles were always ready for an emergency. The vehicles carried drilling and digging tools. There were medical supplies too, in case a rock raider was injured. 
As soon as Chief heard about Axel, he handpicked a rescue crew. Docs led the team. He was a brilliant scientist who had studied geology for years. He would decide if the rockfall was a warning that a bigger tremor was on the way. Jet, the pilot, was known across the galaxy for her flying skills. Sparks was the best engineer in space. He could mend almost any machine. And Bandit, the explorer's gruff navigator, was fearless and quick thinking in a crisis. We only have approximate coordinates for Axel's location, based on his log from yesterday, Chief said. You're in a race against time. Find Axel before he uses up his available air. This is a dangerous mission, Chief added. That quadrant was once a volcanic area. Our scanner readings show that all of the volcanoes are dormant now. But something caused that tremor, so be careful down there. The Rock Raiders reached Quadrant 14 in half an hour. It was a hostile place where geysers spat boiling water into the air. The team had traveled to a small mountain. Basalt crunched under their feet as they looked up at tunnel entrances. The tunnels had been carved out by rock monsters over hundreds of years. Axel was exploring that tunnel on the left side of the mountain, Docs told them. Sparks, take a granite grinder down there. Jet, you follow him on a hover scout. I'll take the rapid rider, said Bandit. Perhaps there's a rescue route via the underground rivers. Docs grabbed a hover scout. I'm going to investigate that tremor, he said. Sparks and Jet drove quickly through the winding tunnels. Two miles below ground, boulders blocked the track. This is the place, said Sparks, stopping the granite grinder. Axel grumbled yesterday that he'd only found granite in Quadrant 14. Listen, Sparks, said Jet, looking relieved. He's sending us a signal. Sparks listened closely. He could hear a faint tapping. Jet was right. On the other side of the rockfall, Axel was using old-fashioned Morse code to signal to his rescuers. The rocky walls were carrying the sound. He heard the granite grinder's engine, Jet said. He tapped. What took you so long? Jet used a chisel to tap back. We're on our way. But Sparks seemed worried. He pointed to his scanner. We need to change our plan, he told Jet. The first tremor damaged the roof of this tunnel. If we drill through to Axel, we could bring the whole thing down. Let's radio the others, Jet said. No, they should keep searching, Sparks replied. Bandit could find a waterway on the other side of those rocks and reach Axel quickly. And Docs must find out what caused the tremor in the first place. Sparks paused and bit his lip. He was thinking hard. We could dig Axel out, but there's no time to send back to HQ for the loader dozer. Axel's oxygen purifier will stop working in about 30 minutes. He'll run out of air. Sparks frowned at Jet. It looks like we're going to have to get our hands dirty, he said. There was a Lego beam in the back of the granite grinder. Sparks dragged it over to the pile of rocks and put one end beneath a boulder. This will lever the rocks out of the way, he told Jet. It's a simple machine and we need all the help we can get. But after 10 minutes, they had only shifted a small pile of boulders. And worse, there had been no other more signals from Axel. He's never this quiet, said Jet. Not even with a hundred tons of rock on top of him. We have to contact the others, Sparks. Sparks didn't reply. Jet glanced back to check that he was okay and gave a gasp of horror. A rock monster was standing behind them with its mighty arms held up high. It held a mass of rock in its hands, ready to crash down on their heads. Jet and Sparks stared at the rock monster. Behind them, there was only a blocked tunnel. There was no way they could escape. The rock monster dropped the rock to one side. It lunged towards them. Sparks closed his eyes. The monster pushed past the rock raiders and bent down to the boulders that blocked the tunnel. With incredible power, it plucked the rocks up and flung them aside as if they were cardboard. In 10 minutes, the monster had cleared a way through the stones. It immediately squeezed into the gap. The rock raiders could hear it pushing boulders out of the way as it carried on through the tunnel. Will it hurt Axel? said Sparks. 
It didn't hurt us, said Jet. The Rock Raiders pushed through the gap to find their friend. Axel, are you okay? called Jet. There was no answer. Sharp splinters of serpentine and obsidian littered the floor of the tunnel. The massive chrome crusher was still laying on its side. The Rock Raiders guessed that Axel had sheltered beneath it to escape the falling rocks. But Axel and the rock monster had disappeared. Dox was exploring the tunnels in nearby Quadrant 15 when the second tremor started. It began with a low rumble. The rock seemed to be roaring with anger. Slivers of granite started to fall from the rocky ceiling. Then the floor cracked open. Boiling magma from the planet's core erupted through the split rock. All at once, it was incredibly hot. Dox turned his hover scout and fled through the tunnels. He swooped and swerved, taking shortcuts wherever he could. Behind him, the melted rock swallowed everything in its path. It took all of Doc's strength and concentration to outpace the magma flow. Just when he thought he could no longer go on, he saw a gap in the walls high above him. With a final spurt of strength, Dox pointed the hover scout up and flew through the gap to safety. Bandit steered the Rapid Rider along a narrow underground stream. He was looking for a new route through to Axel. It was very cold on the water. Bandit pulled on some gloves. Five more minutes, he muttered. Then I'll go back. Fifty yards on, the air was so cold it hurt to breathe. Lumps of ice were floating on the stream. Bandit's teeth chattered. If it got much colder, the Rapid Rider's engine would freeze up. Bandit switched the vehicle to below zero mode. He checked that the skis were working in case he needed them. He was adjusting the engine controls when his scanner started to beep. A message flashed up on the screen. Lego alert, alien life form nearby, caution. At once, Bandit realized his big mistake. He had traveled into an ice monster's den. The monster had sensed him. As Bandit looked around, it reared out of the water, roaring with fury, its glacial claws sharp as steel. Bandit didn't have time to reach for his freezer beam. The ice monster had already caught hold of the Rapid Rider. Grasping the side of the boat, it gave a mighty shove and smashed the vehicle against the cavern wall. The ice monster slipped back under the freezing stream. Bandit was sore all over, but not badly hurt. And although the main light on the Rapid Rider was slightly damaged, it still gave out a faint glow. But the skis were a problem. One of them was too damaged to repair. When he discovered that his radio was broken as well, Bandit knew it was time for some quick thinking. The second tremor was a terrible warning. Dox flew to catch up with Jet and Sparks. This mountain is an active volcano, he cried, jumping off the hover scout. That's what caused the ground tremors. The pressure's building. This place is going to blow in two hours. We've got to hurry. But we've lost Axel, said Jet. We think he went this way, added Sparks, pointing to a gaping hole, half hidden behind a crag of rock. A passage behind it led down towards darkness. Let's follow him, said Dox. Leaving the vehicles behind, the Rock Raiders walked into the dark. The passage led to a massive cave carved out of the marble. The roof was as high as a skyscraper. Wow, gasped Jet. This is like a fairy tale cavern. Stalagmites towered above them, tall as church spires. Gems glittered against the walls. In the middle of the cave was a dark blue lake, and glowing Lego power crystals were piled around the water's edge. On the other side of the cavern, a rock monster was fast asleep. It looked as if it were supposed to be on guard duty. A few yards from the monster, Axel was kneeling by a cluster of crystals. Good to see you, said Dox. I'm glad you found your way down here, Axel smiled back. What is this place? Sparks whispered in amazement. It's a crystal quarry, I think, said Dox quietly. A rock monster secret. I'm not surprised they guard it. I've never seen so many power crystals. 
There was a hidden entrance in the tunnel. I found it as I searched for an escape route, said Axel. So, that's why the rock monster moved the boulders, said Sparks. He was hungry. Behind them, the rock monster sentry snored loudly. He ate too much, said Axel with a grin. It's an incredible find, said Docs. I can't wait to lead an expedition back here with the right equipment. But right now, we should head back to the ship. Jet, please radio Bandit and ask him to head back to HQ. As he finished speaking, an angry bellow echoed around the underground lake. It came from a cave on the other side of the deep blue water. The noise woke the rock monster sentry, who jumped up and pounded towards the cave. The rock raiders were close behind him. Inside the cave, three rock monsters were defending the quarry against a giant slug. Although the rock monsters were strong, the slug was as big as all three of them. As the slug tried to gobble some crystals, the rock monster sounded an alarm. More rock monsters ran in. They pelted the slug with rocks. The slug was outnumbered. It squelched back into the shadows, leaving a thick, slimy trail behind it. Yuck! Gross! said Sparks as the rock monsters picked up their crystals and left the cave. Docs checked his scanner. We've seen some amazing things today, but now we really should move, he said. Pressure is rising all the time and oh my! Docs looked up. We don't have much time. There's going to be a major eruption very soon, he said. How can you tell? asked Jet. There's a kind of magma reservoir beneath this cavern, Docs explained. It's under pressure and its magma levels are building up. So? asked Axel. The tunnel network leading from this cavern is going to act like a feeder pipe, Docs told him. It's going to carry the magma to the surface. Docs pointed to the scanner. This explosion could blow the side off the mountain, he said. We need to get well away, now. We can't leave. We have to warn the rock monsters, said Jet. Yes, agreed Axel. Those big guys have never done us any harm. They've even helped us out. We have to try to make them understand us, Jet added. I don't think we can, Docs told her. It has never worked before. But there has to be a way we can save them, Sparks said. I think we can contain the spread of the magma so that it doesn't make it to the surface of the mountain. Sparks' idea was simple, but not all the rock raiders agreed with it. You can't destroy the chrome crusher, said Axel. We have to, said Sparks. We must block the tunnels leading from this cavern. The melted rock from the planet's core won't be able to force its way up and through the mountain. This cavern will survive, and so will the rock monsters. But what about my chrome crusher? Argued Axel. When the laser blows up, the explosion will be more powerful than if we'd used dynamite on its own. The extra blast will ensure that we block the tunnels with rocks, said Sparks. Don't worry, Axel, Doc said. We'll build you a new one. As Sparks rigged explosives, Jet tried to radio Bandit with no luck. Axel checked that no rock monsters were lurking in the shadows. Luckily, he could see no sign of them. Sparks had rigged detonators at key points in the tunnels. I've set the timer. Let's move, he told the team. The rock raiders had to be far from the cavern before the explosion. Sparks pushed the granite grinder into top gear, while Axel hopped on the back of Jet's hover scout. The team began to race to safety. Five minutes later, they heard a crump as the bombs went off. There she goes, sighed Axel. The rock monsters won't be able to use their quarry for a while, said Docs. But when things cool down, they'll go back. Jet swerved as a stalactite fell from the roof, blocking the tunnel. Keep back, called Sparks. He pulverized the stalactite with the granite grinder's drill, clearing a route through the passageway. Still no contact from Bandit, worried Jet as the rock raiders sped towards the tunnel exit. I hope he was nowhere near that cavern. Finally, as the rock raiders drew near the tunnel exit, the underground pressure boiled over. 
In the marble cavern, the walls shivered as magma tried to force a way out of the mountain. Gemstones rained from the roof, but after the massive explosion, every tunnel was blocked with rock. Amazingly, the magma did not push through. Keep going, everyone, Docs urged. There was still a danger that poisonous gases would be released by the explosion. The team needed to scramble clear of the tunnels. The makeshift dam had held, and the rock monsters were saved. But there was no sign of Bandit on the mountain slopes outside. Where is he? asked Jet. Can anyone see him? Axel gave a loud laugh. Look over there, he said. Bandit was coming towards them on a homemade snowboard. My own invention, he said as he skated up to them. An unfriendly ice monster wrecked the rapid rider, so I made this from a spare ski. Now is anyone going to tell me what those loud noises were about? Let's get back to HQ, smiled Docs as the others crowded around Bandit. Looks like we all have some tales to tell. Race for Survival was written by Marie Birkinshaw and published by Dorling Kindersley Readers in 2000. This is one of the three Rock Raiders books released in that time, and I have to say, this is my favorite of the trio. I really enjoy how it continues the story of the Rock Raiders after the events of the PC game. It echoes the real-life stories of famous explorers making return trips after encountering something new and exciting the first time. Besides the descriptive level of detail in the story setting, I think my favorite aspect is how the characters all seem like professionals doing their job. Oftentimes, I find the Rock Raiders can be made out to be buffoons, sort of stumbling their way from misadventure to misadventure. Characters like Sparks especially are defined elsewhere by their clumsiness rather than their talents. Race for Survival allows every character to shine and really demonstrates in a believable way why each character deserves their ranking positions on the LMS Explorer. There are certainly a few elements that seem out of place to seasoned fans, such as the suggested use of a freezer beam against an ice monster, or the Rock Raiders' willingness to risk their lives to save rock monsters that apparently have never troubled the crew before. Nonetheless, this is a strong outing for the theme, and I really wish Birkinshaw would have had the opportunity to author some more tales of our intrepid crew. I hope you enjoyed this read-through of Race for Survival. The other two books have their own stories to tell, but that's another tale for another time. I've been your host, R.R. Slugger, and I hope to see you next time for some high adventure deep underground.